up guys? So I hope you're enjoying um, the multiple videos coming out. Um, thank you so much to everybody that has subscribed or became a member over on FSC On Demand. If you haven't, the app I believe is gonna come out by the end of the day today. I'm really hoping that that's the case. So make sure that you go to um, FSEOnDemand.com and create an account, it's free, and you'll see new videos just like this going up daily. Um, so you don't wanna miss out on anything. Now for today's video, what we're gonna focus on is a shaggy long bob. So this haircut, I think you'll be able to use uh, in the salon. I think it's a very current look. It's got some disconnection. It's got concave layering. We do multiple uh, dry hair cutting techniques. So lots of things packed into this short video. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Here we go. Welcome to the video. So today what we're going to be focusing on is what I'm going to call a shaggy long bob. You can see this is the end result. It's got a little bit of disconnection, a lot of layers. Uh, it's a really fun cut. I think it's a good transition if your guest is looking for something different, but they don't want to um, lose a ton of length. Uh, this is a cool way to create some layers, create some movement. Uh, and really just have some fun with their haircut. So we're gonna start off sectioning it. Um, I'm gonna basically take up the mohawk section uh, up to mid crown. So starting at parietal ridge, a little bit below parietal ridge, wrap it around the crown area and bring it back. And then I go straight down vertical, down center back um, to section that off. And then I go from the occipital bone over to behind the ear. This is a pretty standard sectioning for me. Uh, anytime I'm cutting hair, I, I like to um, really just section off each of the corners of the head. So I'm gonna comb that over nice and tight um, just to get it out of the way. So I comb it uh, straight over to behind the ear, keep it tight, and then I slide that clip up and under. So now I'm gonna determine my length. And what I'm gonna do by that is um, no elevation. Uh, this is gonna give me that hard line in the back. And then I just give it a little bit of comb tension. I'm using the YS Park 339 comb, which has uh, slightly wide teeth on the one end and nice tight teeth on the other. Uh, I like this comb for precision cutting. So what I do is I just cut that line flat across the back. If your customer has shoulders, unlike this one, uh, you could just kind of comb it down and cut that straight line across the back. Um, but if for some reason you're cutting it a little bit shorter, scooping under and uh, Lifting the hair with the comb just a little bit works really well. So now we're gonna move into concave layering straight down vertical. So uh, we created our guide cutting that straight line in the back and now I'm gonna use that guideline as I elevate the hair to create that short to long kind of scoop feel um, in the haircut. So this is really helping me collapse the back of the hair. One of my favorite things to do with hair is to go in and, and create some concave layers because it just creates so much movement, takes out the bulk and it builds actually quite a bit of volume on the very top of the hair. So um, it's, it's got a really cool shape to it. So I'm keeping a stationary guide as I work through the back of the head. So everything is being overdirected to the center back. Now we've talked about this before, when you overdirect everything to that stationary guide in the very back, when you get around to the front, it gets super, super heavy. The way that we're counteracting that is cutting concave. So the concave is collapsing the shape for the majority of um, the way around the corner of the head. Once we get to the very front, it's obviously gonna push quite a bit of weight still to the front and length, but that's gonna be stuff that we're gonna have fun with at the end of the cut during the dry cut portion of this video. So uh, don't be afraid that um, your haircut isn't connecting at the bottom because now it's pushing, getting even longer and longer. You can see that disconnection. Don't be afraid of that. And don't be afraid of the amount of weight that's getting pushed to the front. You are taking out quite a bit of weight throughout this haircut. And then uh, we will take out more at the end. So pretty simple, bringing everything back to me. Um, things to make sure of when you're cutting concave, your elbow should be free. Your elbow should be on the outside. Your elbow shouldn't be on top of the head. Um, that just makes it get in the way, it keeps you from being consistent. So just make sure that you have a free flow of your elbow um, and your finger is pointing towards the top of the head. So you can see that my elbow is not going towards the head, it's going away from the head. And the other thing I want you to notice is that my body position hasn't changed as I move to the right hand side of the, of the guest or the client or whatever. Um, as I move to the right hand side, my body position stays exactly the same. I just 
change the way I comb. So now, instead of combing and pulling the hair to the guide, I'm combing and pushing the hair to the guide because I want to make sure that um, I'm keeping consistent with where that guide is. Uh, I want to make sure it's in the center back. So if I were to try to scoop and comb the hair towards me, I would be pulling that guide from where it lives, and then I would get an inconsistent haircut. So I take a section, about a half-inch section, part it, and then I push the hair up to the center back and give it its cut. The other thing I want you to notice, and this could be like a beauty school uh, rule break here, is we're cutting past our second knuckle. I don't really have a challenge with that uh, because of the fact that we're cutting concave and we're going short to long and we're creating this movement. Um, there are times that I will recomb it and, and bring it back up, but for the most part, um, this is a nice loose textured look anyways, nothing precise really about this. So I don't really mind cutting past that second knuckle to get the section done. Check out the layering, the volume that's created in the back, and then it pushes that length to the front, which is super fun. Uh, this is the Paul Mitchell Thicken Up. Um, it's basically like a, a liquid gel that goes in the hair and helps thicken up the hair, which I really like. I'm also using my Ergo Diamond Head Paddle Brush, which is still, uh, not still, it's back in stock on freesaloneducation.com. So if you're looking for that, it's an awesome brush. And then I'm using the new Paul Mitchell Turbo Light Plus. This is actually, the Turbo Light has been out before. I liked it then. Um, I love how lightweight this blow dryer is. It's got a digital kind of uh, meter read on the side of it, which is cool. And you can adjust all the different heat settings and everything. And then also it comes with the diffuser, which is always a plus as a hairdresser or somebody that has curly hair. So you can see the digital dial on this. So one of them is heat, which is that one. And then you have your fan. So you have, it's really customizable with how much you can adjust it. So now I'm going to go through, I'm going to do some flat wrap blow drying. Notice that I haven't touched the top of the hair yet. Um, you guys, if you've been following me for a while, you'll know that sometimes I don't like to cut the entire head and then start blow drying it. I like to cut or blow dry what I've cut um, at the beginning. I take a look at the shape that's happening and then I go into the top and attack it that way. So now I'm using the Paul Mitchell Flexible Style Hot Off The Press. This is a product that um, has been around for a while. It used to be in a silver can, now it's in a white can. Um, it's a heat protectant. It's great for um, using the flat iron through the head because of the fact that um, it's got a slight bit of hold as well, which is really nice. So I go through, um, I've ironed the hair out, I smooth it out. You'll start to see that disconnection coming to life. And then I'm gonna go through and do some detail work before I move into the top of the haircut. So check out those disconnections. That's Again, we're going to take care of that, but I like seeing those bold lines. It's, it's something that I just really like. If you don't like that kind of look, you can blend it all right now, and it doesn't even have to have a disconnection. But for me, I like seeing a hard line and then kind of a flow of hair coming over it. It just seems really kind of organic and natural to me, I guess. I don't know if those are the words, but um, I just really like the effect. So you can see how this is really like a layered long bob. Um, I think it's a shag effect because of the concave layering, but I go through and I cut almost like a triangular line or a short to long line, starting short in the back, getting a little bit longer towards the front. Now I let down the top. Um, you can see how that kind of blankets over it. So that's the reason I like to go in and um, kind of uh, section my hair around the curve of the head. So I, I section the top off. It's almost like the roof that's gonna collapse over the whole shape. So I cut the underneath shape and then I let the roof fall over it and I define it based on what I want the end result to look like. So I'm getting my guide from the very back um, part of the cut. So I take a horizontal line and I just keep over directing everything straight into the back, cutting a line pretty much straight across. I'm using a point cutting technique to help um, give me more texture and movement in there. And I just bring everything straight back. So that's pushing all of the weight to the very front of the head. So some of you might be thinking that's going to be super heavy in the front. Well, we're going to go through and we're going to change that when we get it blown dry. So I use a flat wrap technique again, and I use the same ironing technique, um, just going through there, keeping everything um, nice and smooth, really following the head shape. Um, key thing when you're uh, ironing hair to cut it dry is just to make sure that it's falling exactly where it's gonna live, and you don't try to stretch anything out 
uh, unnatural. So now we're gonna do a stroking technique, which is an open and close of the scissor. So as I come up on the hair, I'm closing the scissor, and as I go back down on the hair, I'm, uh, I'm basically pushing and releasing the hair. So let me explain that again, because that wasn't great. So I over direct the hair over, as I bring the scissor up, I'm closing on, and then I release it out. And then I bring it back up, and I close it on the hair, and then I release it out. If you want to see a really good breakdown of this technique, just search the stroking technique uh, on FSE On Demand, and you will find a video where I really break down exactly how that technique works. So it's just open and close. I brought everything over to a stationary guide. What that did was created a nice curved feeling or a nice kind of face frame across the face uh, on the haircut. This is the new Awapui Wild Ginger Anti-Frizz Hairspray. It's got a nice hold to it. It's not super firm. It's got a, a great scent to it. Everybody's complimented that. So I go through and I just define those pieces that we created and then I work my hands into it, and then I spray a little more of the anti-frizz hairspray throughout, um, just to build in that texture and the technique. Hope you guys like this video. Hit me up on social media, everything at Free Salon Education. If you have any questions, I will talk to you guys on the next video. Thanks.